morning friends, it's time for our devotions. We're still in the chapter 10 and we're looking at the issue of Jesus sending out his disciples and we've looked at who they were, their personalities, how we could identify with them. And yesterday we looked at when the Lord sent out his disciples, he didn't allow them to take money with them, he didn't allow them to take food, he didn't allow them to take extra clothes or extra shoes, no sandals with them because he wanted them to trust in him completely. Jesus wanted them to realize that it's Him who um, saved them. It's Him who called them. It's Him who commissioned them to go out. And so Jesus told them that the, workers, the worker is worth his wages. And what Jesus was saying to them is He would make sure that their needs were met. All they needed to do was be faithful to Him and He would work through the people. He would lay it on the people's hearts to take care of them because Jesus said, those who preach and teach the word are worth their wages. And so Jesus then says, I'm sending you like sheep among wolves. They will be as shrewd as the snakes and as innocent as doves. I'm sending you like sheep among wolves. Friends, when they heard these words, this words wouldn't have brought any comfort to the disciples because sheep are helpless easily panicked they cannot protect themselves the only thing a sheep can do is run that is only escape mechanism and they're not even great at that and usually um, wolves would easily be able to catch them and so when this was heavy words what jesus says to them um, sheep were one of the favorite meals of a wolf and so they were always looking for ways that they could get to the sheep and that they could kill them and eat them and so jesus says to them here he's saying i'm sending you among wolves the only one who could protect them were the shepherds if the shepherds did not protect the sheep they were on dangerous territory and what the lord in many ways was saying to them is i'm sending you amongst people that don't want anything to do with you who are going to turn on you. But he's always saying to them, I will be with you. And so he, here's the interesting thing is Jesus says, I'm sending you. A shepherd would do all he could to avoid wolves. He would make sure there was none in the path. But our Lord says to them, I'm sending you among these wolves. And so um, for the disciples, he's making sure that they understand that the ministry is calling them to is not easy. And the same thing today, friends. If we look at how the world is, the world, more and more we see how the world is turning against the Lord. What is evil is seen as good today. And what is good is seen as evil almost. We're living in difficult times. We're living in a time when many don't want to know anything with the gospel. And so our, as Jesus sent them out, we need to realize that we are sent out and that this the gospel and being a christian isn't easy always because it goes it's contrary to what the world wants jesus says to them therefore be as shrewd as snakes and as innocent as doves when snakes are threatened a snake has the ability to get away quickly to get away if he doesn't want to be in a situation where he sees danger and so what the Lord was saying was to them was look for ways that when you see danger coming that you can be as wise as snakes and get yourself out of the situation. The Apostle Paul was wise. He knew when he had to get away. And when we look at the life of Apostle Paul, sometimes God did miraculous signs and got them, freed them through supernatural ways. But on other times, people, on the one occasion we see that people lowered the Apostle Paul in a basket through an opening in a wall so that he could get away from those who wanted to kill him. And so we are to know when to retreat. And see, a snake doesn't always strike. And so what the Lord is saying to his disciples is, be wise, know when to speak, know when to share, and know when to, to leave. He also says here, be as... Um, as Innocent as doves. Now, doves are seen as gentle birds, innocent, pure. 
It even represents the Holy Spirit. So that's the picture of a dove. And um, the Lord is saying that's how us as believers are to be. Because we even find that when the Pharisees came to Jesus and they came to, they were the aim to trick him. And because they wanted him in his answer, they believed he's either going to offend the, the Romans or he's going to offend the Jews. And they said to him, who must we pay taxes to? Or must we pay taxes? And Jesus said, who's on the coin? He said, give to Caesar what is Caesar's. Give to God what is God's. And at that moment, he diffused the situation. Jesus didn't turn to them and, and get into a bigger argument. He just looked at the coin and knew how to diffuse the situation. And so what the Lord was saying to them is be wise and be gentle because that's what God expects of us. That's the character we are to have. And so that's the answer. Then he says, be on your guard for you will be handed over, over to the local authorities and flogged in the synagogues. And so be on your guard. Be on your guard. Beware of what? What were they to be on their guard from? And he was saying from men. Because not every person has your best interests at heart. The Lord was warning them. He was saying, don't trust everyone. You cannot. And I've seen that in the many years of ministry I've been in. My greatest opposition hasn't many times been always in the world. It's been in the church. And it's been amongst those who are so-called Christians. Because sometimes people can stab you deeply in the back. And the Lord is saying to them, be careful. In John 2, 24, it says, But Jesus could not entrust himself to them, for he knew all people. And so the Lord knew the motives of people. He did not entrust himself to everyone. He entrusted himself to a small group, 12 men, and in that group to three to a different degree than to the others. So we cannot just trust everyone. The Lord says we need to be wise as we go out into the world. And then he says to them, you will be handed over to local authorities and flogged in the synagogues. And so our Lord said he would be with them. But he said in this world, they would face trials and tribulations. He would not just protect them from everything. In John 15, 18, it says, if the world hates you, you know that it hated me before it hated you. And so Jesus came and he did so many wonderful things. He never made war. He always showed love, but the world hated him. They hated him to a place where not only did our Lord face opposition, not only was he rejected by the leaders, not only was he insulted and called the son of the devil, but our Lord was mocked, he was beaten, and he was, he was crucified on a cross. And so he says, if I went through that, you're going to go through that. 2 Timothy 3.12 says, Yes, and all who desire to live godly lives in Christ Jesus will suffer persecution. Some people say, the Christian walk is very easy for me. I never face persecution. Well, the reason some people don't face persecution is because they don't live godly lives. Because they don't stand up for the truth. Because they look like the world. They speak like the world. And so friends, if that's who you are, you're not really serving the Lord, because if we really serve the Lord, then the world will not always like us. We are not to be friends with the world. We are to be children of the living God. And so he says, you'll be flogged in synagogues. And we see in Acts 13, 23, we read about Paul and Silas. After they had been severely flogged, they were thrown in prison. In Acts 5, we read about the apostles who were flogged by the religious leaders and so our lord was beaten before he died the disciples were beaten and today we're very lucky at this moment that we are not facing persecution like the church did but we're facing it in different degrees and so my encouragement to you this morning is as we've looked at these verses my question to you this morning is are you once again, sharing the gospel. Are you wise when you share the gospel? Are you gentle when you share the gospel? What, are you, what is it costing you to follow Jesus? What is the sacrifice you have to make in your life? 
who, when last have you shared the gospel? When last is somebody taking offense at you sharing the gospel? Because I want to say it once more this morning. I'm going to say it again. Friends, God hasn't called us to be secret agents. We are called to take out the good news of Jesus Christ. I just pray and trust that you won't just be years of this devotions, but that you'll take the word of God and put it into action. Maybe today, speak to someone about Jesus Christ. This is Dave Trev. God bless you.